Light snow continues into your Wednesday, and it looks like more accumulating snow is on the way for today and the remainder of your week. We'll let you know where the trouble spots are and just how much to expect. With all the snowy weather we've been seeing, you may think you have winter driving down pat. There are plenty of tips out there. We've set out to verify which ones work. Oregon lawmakers want to drop the voting age down to 16. We want to know what you think about it. 5 a.m. on our Wednesday morning. Welcome to Creme 2 Morning News. I'm Jen York. And I'm Brittany Bailey. We are tracking just a couple of school delays for you this morning. There are two two-hour delays, Clarkston and Lewiston. Of course, things could develop throughout the morning. <laughs> we'll update you if we hear about any more, but you're seeing them there on your screen. You can find them on creme.com. And if the need arises, we will scroll them along the bottom mm -hmm. of your screen. But right now, just those two. Evan Ronnie is in the weather center this morning. We did see some snow overnight, but we were really watching the Pullman area and the Palouse. What did they wake up to? So they're still seeing uh, some of that snow going into the Wednesday morning. Right now we saw most of the snow around the region begin around two or three o'clock yesterday and uh, really since then continue in the form of light snow. So around Spokane, we've gotten a confirmation of an inch uh, down toward the Palouse. We're looking at probably around two, maybe three inches so far. And the thing is, additional snow is expected for for the remainder of your day. So you can see on satellite radar what we've seen over the last about five hours or so. You can see stronger accumulations were uh, or maybe a more widespread system uh, earlier on in the morning. So just around uh, 1 a.m. into 2 a.m. And then now at about 5 a.m. we're seeing that over Spokane kind of clear out but still accumulating snow down south of I-90. Uh, so as we go on with the rest of the day, here are our chances in Spokane. We're only at about a 10 to 20 percent chance of some isolated snow showers just as we were for most our evening last night, uh, but as we go on, our temperatures are going to be a big factor too. We'll make our way up to about 32 degrees as the afternoon high. That means that uh, we could be seeing uh, if we, especially during uh, for portions of uh, the northwest that are farther south of us, uh, the possibility of some rain into the afternoon and evening hours as well as the system just kind of continues to linger around the northwest. So uh, lingering showers throughout the day, maybe a portion of uh, the day with a little bit of sun, uh, but that likely won't be until the afternoon hour if we do get it at all. Uh, then we dry out for most of your Thursday and another round hits us for your Friday. We'll be talking about that coming up and just how much to expect, but we do want to get a check of what the driving conditions are like outside with Creme 2's Kira Alfallen. She's in the mobile storm tracker driving around the region to let us know what she sees. Hi, Kira. Yes, good morning, Evan. Well, you did wake up to a little bit of snow on the roads here this morning. This is the South Hill. We are driving on Grand Boulevard right now, which has a thin layer of snow this morning, making things a little bit slick, depending on what kind of car you have. We're driving in a four wheel drive vehicle. We only just experienced a little bit of sliding when we tried to stop a little bit, but you're not going to see it too bad out here just yet. These are what conditions are looking like on the South Hill right now. Again, this is Grand. Uh, the only thing that's really you're going to experience when you're driving out here on Grand is that you can't really see much of which lane you're in. You kind of have to guess a little bit. So uh, conditions not too bad this morning. A little bit slick here with that little bit of snow we got. But again, we're going to be checking other areas around the region and the Spokane area this morning to see if things are worse in other places. But for now, things are looking pretty good. Might just want to give yourself a little bit of extra time as you head out the door this morning. I'm going to go ahead and send it over to Amber, who has a look at your traffic. Good morning, Amber. Good morning. Well, we're taking a look outside at a few of our DOT cams in the area, and we can see traffic is still pretty calm right now. Um, we did get a dusting of snow, and it does look like it is still snowing outside, but it doesn't look like it's enough snow on the ground for plows to be out. So if you are going to start your morning commute, you might run into um, some slick conditions with that snow on the ground. So it's definitely something to keep in mind before you start your morning commute, and it would be a good idea to give yourself some extra time. That's all I have for now, so I will go ahead and send it back to the studio. Amber, thank you so much. A new school delay coming in. The Rosalia School District is now on a two hour delay. Coming up on 504 now. Well, we are tracking a road closure this morning. Eastbound Interstate 90 at Cleelum is closed this morning due to a semi crash. There is no estimated time for that to reopen. There are alternate routes available. Now we also have a heads up for drivers heading to the west side of our state this morning, including if you are heading to Snoqualmie Pass, which you see live behind us. WashDOT is requiring chains for both Snoqualmie Pass and Stevens Pass. Now for Snoqualmie Pass, chains are required for all vehicles except ones with all-wheel drive. Oversized vehicles are prohibited. 
For Stevens Pass, drivers must have traction tires, but chains are required on vehicles more than 10,000 pounds. Oversized vehicles are prohibited. Well, there are a lot of hacks out there that claim to make winter driving easier, but do they really work? We looked into some of those claims. The first claim is you can pour hot water on your windshield to defrost it quickly. An expert from AAA Idaho said that is not the smartest idea. If your windshield is really cold and you pour hot water onto it, you could actually crack it or cause damage. Now the next claim is that you can deflate your tires to increase traction on slick roads. That also is not a good idea. Winter tires are softer, so they grip the road better. You cannot impersonate that by deflating an all season tire. Now anytime you have your tire pressure too low, you do risk at a blowout rather at higher speeds. The third claim is drivers should turn into a skid if their car starts to slide. A leader from AAA Idaho says that old driver's ed tip is oversimplifying things. He said you want to steer in the direction you want to go. Always focus on steering rather than braking. And if you are traveling 25 miles per hour or faster, you want to focus on steering away from an object. Well, the last claim is that you should use your bright lights when driving in heavy snow. Well, AAA Idaho advises against that. Our expert says the refraction of the light against little particles in the air actually makes the problem a lot worse. The best advice for driving in heavy snow is to use caution. If you have a visibility problem, you can always increase your following distance. 506 now. Sacred Heart Medical Center is back open this morning after a temporary lockdown. A hospital spokeswoman says it was all because of a bomb threat. Spokane police got the threat last night around 845. Hospital security responded and locked down the facility during that search. Patient care was not impacted. We heard evidence that Patrick Frazee contacted Crystal Lee in Idaho on three separate occasions, had her come to Colorado to murder Kelsey. Well, it was an intense day in a Colorado courtroom and at the heart of the bombshell evidence in this case of a missing Colorado mother was a nurse from Idaho. She was not even in the courtroom yesterday, but her testimony to investigators dominated the day. She told authorities Patrick Frazee beat his fiance to death with a baseball bat on Thanksgiving Day. We learned Idaho nurse Crystal Lee Kenny was in Colorado around the time Kelsey Barrett went missing. She admitted to having a romantic relationship with Frazee. She also admitted to being at the crime scene, calling it horrific. Kenny said she took gloves, a protective bodysuit, and trash bags from her home in Idaho and drove all the way to Colorado. She says Frazee asked her to do that. Kenny also told police that she helped him to clean up the crime scene, but intentionally left behind clues to help investigators. She says Frazee first asked her to poison a drink and give it to Barrett. Kenny says she refused that request and other times that Frazee asked her to murder Barrett. Crystal tells investigators that she did not comply with any of those and said, I can't do this and tells Patrick, I can't do this. Well, Frazee is charged with eight counts of, in the death of Barrett. A judge ruled there is enough evidence for Frazee to stand trial for those charges against him, so his case will move forward. He is slated to be arraigned on April 8th. It has been nearly one month since Governor Jay Inslee declared a public health emergency because of the measles outbreak. Medical investigators are still trying to track down people who were potentially exposed. Clark's done a really good job of identifying the cases and the people that were exposed and saying you really need to be in isolation or be in quarantine. And a lot of those folks have taken that to heart and haven't traveled and exposed other people around the state. But investigators are running into some barriers. Some patients are not cooperating and are refusing to share whether they visited any public places. For other people, it is giving them second thoughts about not getting immunized. We look at what is our measles uh, vaccine uptake, and our vaccine uptake has been pretty substantial in the last couple of weeks. That people who had previously not been immunized are now turning to the vaccine so that their kids or themselves, if they weren't immunized, are getting vaccinated. There are now 63 cases in Washington, 62 in Clark County, one in the Seattle area. Governor Jay Inslee is bringing the national health care debate to Washington state. He is proposing a plan being billed as a way to fill in gaps in existing coverage. 
The proposal would broaden state subsidies for private insurance as well as create a state contracted insurance option. It would also require the state health care authority to draw up plans for expanded individual subsidies in late 2020. It would also offer state contracted plans the following year. Well, is it time to stick with daylight saving time all year long? Well, that is the proposal in a bill a state Senate committee will discuss today. The plan calls for Washington state to permanently stay on daylight saving time. That means you would not need to set your clocks back an hour in November and then forward an hour in March. By the way, this year we spring forward on March 10th. Oregon teenagers can get their licenses when they turn 16 and soon they also may be able to register to vote. The Salem Statesman Journal reports several lawmakers are working on a plan to lower the voting age from 18 to 16 in Oregon. We want to know what you think about this. Do you think Washington and Idaho should lower the voting age to 16? Let us know by heading to creme.com vote or click on the vote now tab on the creme 2 mobile app. Now, if the bill passes, the question would go to voters in the 2020 general election. The proposal would make Oregon the first in the nation to lower the statewide voting age to 16. Some student advocates are also pushing for that legislation. If I can be tried as an adult, why can't I vote like an adult? I pay income tax like an adult. I drive like an adult. I can be charged and sentenced as an adult. <laughs> why is something so important, such as voting, limited to those who are our present and not our future? The bill's authors say they want 16 and 17 year olds to be able to vote in all elections, including federal races. Looks like right now the majority of folks saying nope. 16 year old should not be able to vote, but keep voting again. Vote now tab on our creme 2 mobile app or creme.com slash vote 511 now on this Wednesday. Spokane astronaut Ann McLean is doing some maintenance up in space and this one looks pretty complicated. Well, it's cold here in Spokane, but there is a place NASA is tracking with a low far into the negatives. And we could be seeing more snow into your Wednesday. That's what we're talking about after the break.